Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. With the first pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select... And as the saying goes, everybody gets better on draft day because you won't know for several years whether the players these teams pick actually worked out or not, whether they you know, set your franchise up for great things or whether they set your franchise back for several years. So in today's video, I'm going to go back through all 32 NFL teams and pick out the best draft steals of all time and the biggest draft busts of all time. Mm. As I look at the best and worst selections for all 32 NFL teams in NFL history. Now, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do me a favor, hit the uh, like button. And if you think I left somebody out, make sure to share that in the comment section as well. And also, if you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, the criteria I used to comprise this list is really simple. All I did was look at what it costs a team to acquire a player, things like money, draft capital, or both. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. There's too much money in my in hand. Uh, versus what they received in return, whether that's uh, stat-wise, wins and losses, games played, etc., to determine what the best and worst return on investment was for each individual franchise. So, starting off with the Cardinals. Maybe the best draft pick that the Cardinals ever made was Larry Wilson, who was a seventh round pick in the 1960 NFL draft. He played 12 NFL seasons and was all pro eight times, finishing his career with 52 interceptions. But what he was best known for was bringing the safety blitz to the NFL, despite the fact that sacks didn't become an official stat until 1982. As far as the worst pick, I would say it probably comes down to two quarterbacks, both of which they drafted 10th, whether it was Josh Rosen or Matt Leinart. Matt Leinart had a much higher expectation coming into the league as a Heisman Trophy winner who also won two national championships in college, uh, but he also played four years for the franchise while only starting a total of 17 games, while Rosen only played in one season and was traded after 13 starts, winning only three games. There were nine mistakes my head made ahead of me. They will know that they made mistake. Up next, we got the Falcons. The Falcons currently have a player on their roster that could take the best spot if he continues playing the way that he is. That's Grady Jarrett, who was a fifth-round selection and already has two Pro Bowls to his resume at the age of 27. But long before he was a Falcon, there was a player that was drafted even later in the seventh round by the name of Jamal Anderson, who in 1998 gained celebrity fame for his Dirty Bird touchdown dance and the dirty bird. while also carrying a league-high 410 times for an NFC high 1846 yards uh, and essentially carrying the Falcons on his back all the way to the Super Bowl. His career was shortened by multiple knee injuries and his career basically flamed out after about 5,000 total career rushing yards. As far as worst picks go for the Falcons, you have to go all the way back to Bruce Pickens who was the third overall pick in 1991 to find a true bust. This guy here only started eight total NFL games and only recorded two career interceptions before being out of the league. The Ravens are probably one of the most consistent teams when it comes to drafting since they moved to Baltimore, and you could definitely choose guys like Marshall Yonda, who was a third round pick and is probably a Hall of Famer. But if you dig a little bit deeper, one of the biggest draft steals of their history would be Adelaide Thomas, who was drafted in the sixth round of the 2000 draft. He was a key contributor on their first ever Super Bowl team, having a career year of 11 sacks while earning his second and final Pro Bowl selection. In total, he started a 109 games got them 53 sacks and six defensive touchdowns for his career. Worst, I'd probably say would be Sergio Kendall. Who? Never heard of him? Yeah, that's not the creator of the Kindle Notebook. Sergio Kindle was deemed a first-round talent by most analysts in 2010, but teams were scared off by Kindle's often injured knee and his off-the-field incidents. Those concerns materialized when shortly after he was drafted, he fell down two flights of stairs at his home, suffering a series of injuries that effectively ended his career before it even started. To date, the former 43rd overall pick only played in three NFL games and didn't record a single stat except for one one tackle ouch next up for the buffalo bills for best this pick could belong to jason peters future hall of fame left tackle if only he was drafted mm. 
seeing as he was an undrafted tight end of all positions when he was brought into the league. But one of the best draft steals when it comes to Buffalo Bills history was definitely defensive tackle Kyle Williams, who was a fifth round pick in the 2006 draft. He played all 13 years of a possible Hall of Fame career in Buffalo and dominated his way to six Pro Bowls uh, as well as 53 career sacks. Another great option would be Andre Reid, who was drafted in the fourth round and became a Hall of Fame wide receiver, but I'll go with the guy that was drafted a little bit later. For worst, it's got to be EJ Manuel, who was drafted 16th in the 2013 NFL Draft. In five seasons of his career, he only totaled 20 total passing touchdowns and won only six games in his NFL career. Moving on to the Panthers, they haven't had a ton of great steals when it comes to their draft. It's a fairly new franchise, but I think one of the best would definitely be Josh Norman. <laughs> was a fifth round pick in 2012 and at one point was considered one of the best cornerbacks in the entire league although he only earned one uh, all pro one pro bowl in his career he has started a total of 95 games in his career to this point look up in the sky it's a bird it's a plane it's josh norman <laughs> For worst, two players really stand out. Tim Bianca Batuka was the eighth overall pick in 1996, but he did play several mediocre seasons for them before ending his career. Uh, the most shocking of all the players on this list would probably be Ray Carruth, who was also drafted in the first round. Uh, but ultimately, his career ended after only 20 games in three seasons due to his involvement in a murder case of a woman who was eight months pregnant with his child. He was found guilty and served 18 years in prison before being released in early 2018. Next up for best, we have the Chicago Bears. Richard Dent makes the most sense being an eighth round pick in 1983, the quarterback loaded class of 1983. He went on to become a Super Bowl MVP, a two-time champion, a Hall of Famer who had four Pro Bowls, four All-Pros, and 137 sacks in his career, which was good enough for 10th all time. For worst, it's definitely Mitch Trubisky. You suck. They passed on guys like Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson in the same draft. Oh my God, no! No! To trade up one pick to draft Mitch Trubisky, who became a colossal bust as the number two overall pick, leaving guys like Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson on the board. Next up for the Bengals, we got Geno Atkins. This guy is a fourth round pick in 2010. He's still playing and he already has eight career Pro Bowls and 75 and a half career sacks. It's hard to argue that this guy is probably a surefire Hall of Famer when he finally hangs him up. For worst, I have a tie. Kajana Carter was a first overall pick, which makes it hard to overlook. He also signed a seven year, $19 million contract, which was an all time record in the NFL at that time for a rookie contract. It's hard to label him a bust though considering that injuries immediately ended his career I mean his first preseason game he tore a ligament and missed the entire season and it was all downhill from there the other option is Achilles Smith who was a third overall pick uh, but he was a quarterback he only started 17 games winning only three and had a career completion percentage of 46 percent next up is the best for the Browns in 1964 they took a running back by the name of Leroy Kelly in the eighth round who went on to have six Pro Bowls 74 touchdowns and 7,200 rushing yards. But where the Browns really make their hay is in the worst category. Trent Richardson was the third overall pick, and he seemingly forgot how to play football after his rookie season, missing huge holes and just not knowing how to play at all. I cannot see, I'm legally blind. But I would say Johnny Manziel is a much higher profile player, especially considering some media members were saying that he was going to be better than LeBron James. Johnny Manziel will become even bigger than his buddy and business partner LeBron James ever was. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? He came into the league as a celebrity with celebrity friends. He was only drafted 22nd in the 2004 draft. Just go Manziel around. threw his hands, a fumble. Wow. Take the fumble away from Manziel. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys. Best 
you really break down to two different quarterbacks. Roger Stallback, the 10th round pick out of 1964, is a Hall of Famer. He's got two Super Bowl rings, took the team to four Super Bowls. Dak Prescott, as of late, he was a fourth round pick in 2016, already has two Pro Bowls to his name, and he's got 17,000 passing yards in about four and a half seasons. Now, as far as worse goes, when you're as successful as the Cowboys are, you don't have a ton of worse picks. I would say their worst pick would probably be tight end David LaFleur back in 1997. He was a 26th second pick and he only had 729 career receiving yards next up for the broncos for best pick there's really only two when it comes to hall of famers shannon sharp and terrell davis shannon sharp was the seventh pick in 1990 uh he has eight pro bowls to his name and three super bowl championships keep going Father tristan yeah! And Terrell Davis was a sixth round pick in 1995 who also went on to become a Hall of Famer with three Pro Bowls slash All Pros, two Super Bowls, and two Offensive Player of the Year awards before knee injuries derailed an all-time great career. As far as worst goes, you could say Tim Tebow because it was such a head-scratching pick at the time. Well, will he work some magic again? Oh, no. Uh, but they also had a guy by the name of Marcus Nash, who was the 30th pick in 1998, who had four career catches and one start in three years. Next up with the Lions, I would say the best pick is a recent pick, Quandre Diggs, who was a sixth round pick in 2015. He already has 61 career starts, and he made the Pro Bowl for the first time in his last season this past year, although it was in Seattle. That's right, they already traded him. Oops. As far as worst goes, that would either belong to quarterback Andre Ware, who was drafted 7th in the 1990 draft. He only had 6 starts in 4 years and only passed for 1,100 career passing yards. But for me, I think the worst pick would be Charles Rogers. He was drafted 2nd overall in the 2003 draft and his career ended after just 9 starts and 36 catches. A series of broken clavicle injuries and substance abuse violations. He also recently passed from liver failure at the age of just 38 years old. Next up for the Packers, uh, for best, I mean, it's hard to overlook a guy like Bart Starr, who had seven total championships and was drafted in the 17th round. He was also the 1966 MVP, and he was a two-time Super Bowl MVP. But a little bit more current, I would have to say guys like Donald Driver, who was a seventh round pick and had 10,000 career receiving yards, as well as four Pro Bowls and a Super Bowl. As far as worst goes, there's few names in NFL draft bust history that are more well-known than Tony Mandarich. He was a second overall pick in 1989 and was deemed uh, a can't miss prospect but he did start 63 NFL games so to me a bigger draft bust while being a little bit of a later pick would be Justin Harrell. He was a 16th pick in 2007. He started only two games and never recorded a sack in three seasons due to injuries. Best pick for the Texans would definitely be Owen Dane. He was a fourth round pick in 2006. He is a two-time Pro Bowler and he started 125 games in his career ending with about 5,661 receiving yards. Worst would definitely be Kevin Johnson, the 16th overall pick in 2015. He had one interception in six years of his career, starting only 18 games in four years in Houston. Moving on to the Colts, the best pick in recent history, without a doubt, is Robert Mathis. A fifth round pick in 2003 made his way to four Pro Bowls with 91 and a half career sacks. Worst pick would definitely be Trev Alberts, the fifth overall pick in 1994. He started a total of seven games in three years before he was out of football entirely. But the pass up a Trent Dilfer when all you have is Jim Harbaugh. Give me a break. Who the hell is Mel Kiper? Next up with the Jags, another newer franchise. I would say the best would probably be Gardner Minshew, who was a sixth round pick in 2019. He's been playing pretty good even though he's about to lose his job, but he's definitely a name to watch in the future. The guy has 37 career touchdown passes to 11 interceptions in about two seasons worth of playing. How much you want to make a better I can throw a football over the mountains. Worst, I would say Justin Blackman. This guy was a fifth pick in 2012, and he was a pretty good looking player. He had 93 catches in his first three years before his uh, career was derailed by injuries and drug problems. 
Next up, we got the Kansas City Chiefs. Tyreek Hill is probably the best draft pick that they've made in their history. He was a fifth round pick in 2016, and the guy's speed is changing the league. He's been to a Pro Bowl five times in five years, and an All-Pro three times in his career as a receiver and a return man. For worst, Todd Blackledge, who was the seventh pick in the quarterback loaded draft of 1983, probably is the worst considering they passed on guys like Dan Marino and Jim Kelly, who were drafted later in the draft. His career quarterback rating was a 60, and he never threw for more than 10 touchdowns in a season. Next up for the Rams, the best would be Deacon Jones. He was a 14th round pick in 1961. He's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. He went to eight Pro Bowls, five All Pros. He played before sacks was an official stat, but he was accredited with 173 by historians who went back and looked at all of his games. For worse, there's a lot of options uh, to go with guys like Greg Robinson who was the second overall pick but the worst and most tragic story would probably be Lawrence Phillips the former number sixth overall pick in 1996 played less than two years before drugs and off-the-field issues ruined his career he most recently made headlines as his tragic tale came to an end uh, as he apparently committed suicide in jail in 2016 he is truly one of the saddest tales of wasted talent in NFL history next up for the Chargers for best I would like to say Drew Brees, but he was only a second round pick. Nope. I'm going to go to day three with Darren Sproles, who was an undersized fourth round pick in 2005. He went on to finish sixth all time in all purpose yards in NFL history with almost 20,000 all purpose yards to his name while collecting three Pro Bowls in the process. <laughs> Worst would definitely be Ryan Leaf. Hey, don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Second overall pick in 1998. It was made even worse by the fact that Peyton Manning was the player picked in front of him and the player that he would always be compared to. His career completion percentage was 48%, and he had a total of 14 touchdown passes to 36 interceptions. He made more headlines with off-the-field incidents and drug problems than he did winning games, winning only four in his career with a career passer rating of 50. Next up for the Dolphins best, we have Zach Thomas, fifth round pick in 1996. He had seven Pro Bowls, five All Pros. He was a true do it all player with 20 sacks, 17 interceptions, and 16 forced fumbles in his career, as well as being a tackling machine. As far as worst pick goes, Deion Jordan, who started one game in two years before missing an entire year due to a substance abuse violation. That's terrible return for a guy who was drafted third in the draft in 2013, as the Dolphins only got three sacks out of him in three seasons. Next up for the Vikings, I would say Matt Burke, who was a sixth round pick in 1998, a center who went to six Pro Bowls, was also a part of a Super Bowl roster, and is one of the best centers of all time. For worst, I would say it's Troy Williamson, the seventh pick in 2005. He started 24 games in three years and only caught a total of 1,067 yards. Next up for the Patriots, I mean, do I really need to tell you the story of their best draft pick? I think it's pretty obvious. Tom Brady, who is the sixth round pick of the year 2000, could easily be considered the greatest draft pick of all time if he's considered the greatest player of all time. Uh, do I really need to go over his story? Seven rings, all the records. Let's just move on. For worst, I would say Andy Katzenmoyer, who was a big name coming out of college. He was a Buckus Award winner, a Lambert Award winner, and ultimately his career was shortened by neck injuries that saw him only play two years in the NFL. Next up for the Saints, the best could be uh, one or two players, both of which came in the same draft. Whether you want to say Marcus Colson, who was a seventh round pick in 2007, he had just under 10,000 career receiving yards or Jari Evans from the same draft who was a fourth round pick he had a total of six straight Pro Bowls and four all pros so take your pick there the worst would be Jonathan Sullivan who cost the team two first round picks from the 17th and the 18th they had to trade up to the number six spot to take him he only started 16 games in three years and got one and a half sacks before getting arrested and being out of the league. Next up for the Giants, maybe the best in this entire list based off of where they got him in the draft would be Rosie Brown. A 27th round draft pick in 1953, made his way to nine Pro Bowls and nine All Pros as well as being a Hall of Famer. I don't think a single player was drafted later than this guy on this entire list. As far as the worst, 
Uh, the Giants have had some bad ones as of late. Eric Flowers, the ninth pick in 2015, was a pretty bad starter. Daniel Jones probably had the biggest reaction. He was the sixth pick in 2019. At the moment, he doesn't look like uh, he's going to work out. Trying to stay upright, and he trips! And then Eli Apple, who was the 10th pick in 2016, who only played a uh, two and a half seasons with the Giants before they let him go and had one interception in New York. Next up, we got the Jets for best. Joe Klecko, a sixth round pick in 1977. He had four Pro Bowls and two All Pros uh, and was a star in the 80s. The worst would definitely be Vernon Golston, defensive end, who was a sixth round pick in 2008. He only started five games in three years and never recorded a single single sack. Next up for the Raiders, as far as best goes, Bo Jackson in the seventh round in 1987 uh, is tough to beat. He never broke a thousand yards and his career was shortened uh, by injuries, but I mean, everybody knows who Bo Jackson is. Bo Jackson is the closest thing to a real life Hercules that we have in the NFL. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's Super Bowl! As far as worse goes, you're going to be hard to find a worse pick in NFL history than Jamarcus Russell, who is the number one pick in 2007. His horrible work ethic and game prep is stuff of legends. There was a story that uh, coaches used to send him home with blank tapes and ask him to study them and when he came back they asked if he studied the tapes and he said yes even though the tapes were blank. Next up we have the Philadelphia Eagles. I would say for best it probably comes down to Jason Kelsey who is a pro bowler or an all pro six times in his 10 seasons in Philadelphia. He's also a Super Bowl champion which you know a lot of people can hardly forget. As for for worst, I know a lot of Eagles fans might say Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson, but the worst has to definitely be Kevin Allen, who was the ninth pick in 1985, and he only played one season because he was arrested in 1986 for uh, cocaine possession and charged with sexual assault shortly after. Never played another game in the NFL. Some clown! Next up for the Steelers, Mike Webster, fifth round pick in 1974. He had nine Pro Bowls, seven All-Pros, and four Super Bowls. Uh, he probably would be the pick, but then you could also go with Antonio Brown, who was a sixth round pick in 2010. Uh, and was one of the best receivers in the league since he entered the league. As far as worst goes, Jarvis Jones, the 17th pick in 2013. A rare miss for the Steelers when it comes to drafting linebackers. He only had six career sacks in four seasons before his career was ended with injuries. Next up for the Niners, they have a lot of best options at tight end. Guys like George Kittle, who was a fifth round pick in 2017, is already having a all-time great looking career. But for guys that finished their career, Charles Haley has five Super Bowl rings, uh, as well as being five-time Pro Bowler, a Hall of Famer, and 100 sacks. As far as worst goes, I mean, you can make a case for Solomon Thomas. He was the third pick in 2017. He had six sacks in four years up to this point but i would say jim drunken miller who was a 26th pick in 1997 who only had 239 career passing yards uh would probably be a much bigger bust even though his draft position was much further back next up for the seahawks as far as best goes i really can't choose between these two they're forever linked at the hip it's richard sherman and cam chancellor both of which were fifth round picks in the 2010 and 2011 drafts and they're both uh, obviously you know part of the legion of boom so i'll just leave those guys together well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. As far as worst goes, I would say Aaron Curry, the fourth selection out of 2009. He was okay, but not considering that they paid him a six-year contract worth $60 million with $34 million guaranteed, which was the most ever guaranteed to a non-quarterback rookie in NFL history. He just never lived up to that. Next up for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I would say the best would be Rondé Barber. He was the third round pick. He's the highest I'd put on this list uh, based on the fact that I couldn't find anything better, but he was a beast. I mean, the guy was a five-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, 28 sacks, 47 interceptions, 15 forced fumbles, and 14 touchdowns. The worst would be Gaines Adams, the fourth overall pick in 2007. He had 13 sacks in three seasons with the Buccaneers. He died, however, unexpectedly in 2010 from a previously undetected heart condition. Next up for the Titans, I would say the best would probably be Derek Mason. He was a fourth round pick in 1997 and he went on to have 12,000 career receiving yards, one all pro and two pro bowls. As far as worst goes, Jake Locker was a quarterback. He was drafted eighth in 2011. In four years, he never threw for more than 2,200 yards in a season and he had under 5,000 yards for his career. And then last but not least, the Washington football team 
seemed the best would have to be Chris Hamburger, who was an 18th round selection in 1965. He's a Hall of Famer with nine Pro Bowlers and five All Pros. The worst pick I would have to say would probably be Robert Griffin III, based off the fact that they traded so many first round picks to get him at the number two pick. I don't really feel that he was necessarily a bust. I feel like they mismanaged him and they let him get injured in his rookie year that essentially ended his career. Uh, but that's definitely a fitting end to this list uh, as we have made it through all 32 teams. If you guys want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and stick around and I will try to do more in the future. Other than that, thanks for watching Mad Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.